here's the program plan that I talked to you guys about before and all of the learning outcomes, okay? And for math, there was a whole bunch of them and same with language arts. Okay, so that was what we needed to do. So I started a database with one note and I started a section with my son's name and his education plan in grade one and grade two. He's just going into grade two, so that's all we've done so far. Under each section, I have different pages. So there's funding, learning outcomes, exam bank tests, and then one for every month of the year. So this helps me know what we needed to do, the exam banks, how much funding we spent, and then what we did every month. And this is what I sent to our facilitator. So if you need to keep records, or even if you don't need to keep records, but you just want to, this is a really great way to do it and make sure that you have everything you need and can find it super easy. Okay, so I wrote down the lessons that we did every month. So here you'll see it says the good and the beautiful level K, lessons 29 to 32. And then we did morning basket, the read aloud we did with me, their individual reading and passports to adventure. So that's the curriculum that we used for um, language arts in this month. And then in our program plan, if you look at this, there's the numbers on here. And so I just took these and put them in the computer. So I know exactly what we did. And for language, it just happens that it, we did one, basically one through nine. So we wrote those in there. And then I continued with math, wrote the lessons that we did, any games that we did with a little uh, explanation of what it's about. So this is a subtraction game up to 10, an addition and subtraction up to 50, uh, Life of Fred, and then these are the learning outcomes that we finished. And then whenever we did a, a test, I wrote here that we did it. Sometimes I wrote the percentage that we got, but I always kept that on our um, exam bank paper too. And then for science, this one was a little bit trickier because they don't have one, two, three to mark off. They have basic topics that you need to do and then you do the tests. So I wrote the curriculum that we use, the field trips and experiences that we did that are science-based. And then I looked at our topics and if we look in our, not in the math, if we look in the science one, this is what it looks like, okay? So then it says topic B is seasonal changes. Describe them, interpret the effects of living things, okay? So I wrote topic B, seasonal changes, and then we explored nature and we read books. Sometimes I wrote about the books that we read, but I often didn't. And then building things, this is what we did, some models, um, needs of plants of animals, and then we did this test, identifying color, for topic one. So that was a really good way to do that. And then I also wrote down our extracurriculars. And this is October. It's the same layout, but I got a little bit more organized. And I also added pictures. So you'll see here's the exam bank. There's the percentages that he got on his tests. So I would send that to our facilitator. And then I would also send pictures. So she always wanted to see like what hands-on things he was doing. This was a field trip we went on. This is a circuit that he made in a tinkering class. So that's science. Then this is our ocean animal and patterns. Another field trip, reading. And this is math. Okay, so he made groups of 10. Then we were estimating how many of these manipulatives that we had. So that was a hands-on learning experience. And then um, here is his handwriting. And often I would just take a picture of his actual book work without him in it, but this one was just too cute. And then I don't send all of these pictures to my facilitator. It's normally only about five pictures, but I like to keep a good record so that I can look back and say, okay, what did we do for science? in January or what okay so this is November what we did so we did some watercolor painting snow exploring here's some different things that we built and the test so it helps me to know what we need to do and what we have done and also when I'm planning for the next grade it's nice and easy because here we went to the remembrance day program so next year 
in grade two, I can just click over here and look in November and I can, sit, I can write myself a little note, remember to go to Remembrance Day. Okay, so that's a good way for me to remember what different things we need to do. And also when I'm preparing my daughter's program, because hers, this is Karsten's, but I can just go to my daughter's and I can look and see what she needs to do and what the difference is. So far I haven't put really anything in here except for what we're doing right now because we kind of started a little bit early, which is fun. So having all of the learning outcomes already written down and the resources that I used is helpful for my other kids planning. So here's some of his handwriting that he did. This is for science. This is the marine biology from the good and the beautiful. And then after Halloween, we did charting with all of our candy. How fun is that? Um, building and we did a bunch of history. So we did some recreating of battles. This is a scribble bot. He was reading his scriptures. And here's some math, and that's a model that he built. Okay, so everything we have is here. So it's really easy for me to look back and say, okay, what did we do for this? Do we need to do more, or what didn't we do, or whatever. So that's how I keep it all online and easy for me to refer to, because I can see this on my laptop, but it also talks to my phone. I can see all this information on my laptop, but it also syncs with my phone. So I can add things when I'm out and about, or I add pictures directly from my camera into this program and then it syncs them. So it's really easy for me to keep track of. And then for grade two, this is the next program. So this is the curriculum that we're looking at, the different things that I need and where I need to get them from so that when I um, request supplies from my facilitator it's easy for me to know exactly what we need to get and then this is the learning outcomes last year I didn't do this uh, I just I just didn't I didn't think about it but this year I did so now when he does this one I can just mark it off here and then when he does it in October then I'll just put it in the math section here and I'm gonna use the same layout that I did for grade one where it's the subject, the curriculum that we use, the outcomes that are completed, and the exam banks. So that's, and then I'll just unclick that for right now. But then I'll have it all right here so I can look it up whenever I need to. And then I did the same thing with the exam bank test that we're required to do. So if you have any questions about OneNote or how to set this up, send me a message and I will be happy to help you. This has been a really good way for me to keep track and also for my facilitator to know what we're doing in an easy way so that she doesn't have to be like, okay, so you did this, but what did you actually learn? Because I write what learning outcomes we mastered. And I hope that helps you guys with your record keeping.